Yo, what's up, Evil Empire TV? I'm out here at Jabber Jaws Bar and Grill in downtown Pennsylvania. Sunday service 5. Got Crucifier, Controller, and Bellwear the Ritual. It's after the show. Let's talk to some fucking people. And I got cotton mouth like a motherfucker. Yo, yo, Evil Empire TV. This is Five Questions Alone from Controller Chris. Chris from Controller. And I'm here with Steve from Controller. I'm here with Greg from Crucifier. What is the greatest song ever written? Oh shit. Oh yeah, on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm I'm eclectic man. I listen to a lot of different things, and honestly, the first thing that came to mind was this is a tribute. But that's just because you said this is the greatest song in the world. Oh shit! Yeah. So you, that totally fucked me. I don't know, man. I'm a can I pass? Can we pass? Sure. That's yeah, fine. pass that one. Ace is high by Iron Maiden. Right on. Descend by Fear Factory. Oh, okay. That that would honestly have to be my favorite one. Um, Dino's riffs on that is kind of what actually got me into the way that I write all of my guitar riffs. Okay. So that would honestly have to be my favorite one because it's probably I think their best album's obsolete still. So oh, that so that would be it. Yeah, Factory. yeah, obsolete. Obsolete was probably one of my favorite album, and that's honestly what kind of went uh, drove me the direction I went with all my stuff. So descend. Yep. Okay. Cool. So on the contrary, what's the worst song ever written? Uh, I think there's this band that, that talks about being headstrong. Not really the worst, no, but it definitely is the first thing I would click off my radio. Is that like Trapped or something? I don't know who the yeah, fuck Everybody hates like. Trapped. I think yeah. Trapped. Yeah. yeah. Headstrong. Yeah, that is headstrong. Yeah, that's fucking it. <laughs> trapped. Yeah, yeah. Every, everybody fucking hates them. Yeah, so, yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. We Anything by Florida Georgia Line. <laughs> I mean, I got nothing specific on that. It's just the pop country thing, and I deem them as kind of the quintessential of that. It just drives me it was horrible. nuts. It's just, I can't handle any of that, man. I gotta look, I, I've heard that name before. I don't know any of their music, but I gotta look it up now just to, you know. It, just, go ahead and hurt yourself. Sure. Everybody needs to hurt I'm down for the at abuse. least a couple times with it. But yeah, if you got a factory job in the Indiana area, you will have heard the damn band once. One, more than one time. So. Anything by the Hansons. Where do you see your band in a year from now? Still alive. And playing. <laughs> Still playing is good. Uh, definitely rolling back through here, man. Uh, right Pennsylvania is treated as well. Um, this is a we we were cutting our teeth. I'm actually uh, pretty new with this group. Been here about six months, and uh, just upwards. Uh, Metal in the mountains yesterday was a good time. We hope to return to that. So more festivals and uh, hopefully even some terrestrial radio play. FM. Right on. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we will be doing a uh, another longer run uh, coming up fall of next year. We're already working on that right now, trying to head further south next year. Uh, we're planning on actually heading into the studio here in about January or February, and we're planning to not release all at the same time, we're planning on actually going to recording three different uh, releases all at the same time to actually stagger out over the course of the next two years. Oh, so, shit, yeah. Yeah, we, we got a lot coming down the plate, actually, on, on our uh, plans for the next two years or so for releases and tours. So, you guys are planned out. That's awesome. Yeah, we're, we're planning on actually just make it, we're wanting to kind of work the bugs out with this tour run and then make next year kind of where everything's ironed out, and we got multiple releases under our belt to actually start pushing out and running with. So. That's awesome. Yep. What musician would you bring back from the dead? <sighs> That's a tough one, man. Uh, probably Kurt Cobain. Right on, me too. Probably Kurt Cobain, just because I think he had a lot of, like, if, if anything, I think as he was getting old, he would have been just a fun fun person to follow. Just... <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, could you imagine nowadays? Yeah. Around? Jesus. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. 
Chuck. Chuck from Death. Death. I should wrong. I talking about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck Norris, but that's a martial artist, not a musical artist. So. Unless you play it, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Honestly, Kurt Cobain, and not because a style thing, but more out of just a curiosity that if he had had the opportunity yeah. to keep going, where would the Nirvana sound actually evolve to? Because I know his, I'm not a big Beatles fan, but I know his influence was heavily in the Beatles. Would it have gone more that direction, or would he have ended up kind of still steering the ship with grunge to be something different? So probably Kurt, Co yeah. Kurt Cobain just to see what he would have done. Yeah, because he was kind of like about over that whole sound. Yeah, exactly. Like he was going to go somewhere weird. Yeah, Something. I don't know if he would have gone and like started to spearhead a new direction with the new metal sound that was starting to develop at that point, or if he would have had any influence in that, or if he just would have ended up spearheading something completely different. Oh, yeah. Kind of like Silverchair when they did their Neon Ball. They really kind of... Yeah, they all of a sudden went way left field, and I'm kind of curious if Nirvana would have ended up doing the same thing with Kurt. So oh, shit, yeah, yeah. That, that's, where my, that's where my direction kind of goes at with that. Kind of an odd comparison with Silverchair, because everyone was kind of giving them... Yeah, know, like. But, Nirvana, they like after Freak Show, once they hit Neon Ballroom, they went way left field of any of their old grunge stuff, and I'm wondering if Kurt would have ended up trying to do the same thing. Some weird stuff. Not no, he they just sound else. like Silverchair, but to have gone way left field with orchestral stuff and all that. So yeah. I imagine. think he would have. Yeah, I think he would have done some different things and everything. And if, not saying it would have been everybody's cup of tea, but it definitely oh, yeah. would have ended up bringing some new fans of it. Did you get into playing music? I honestly got into playing music back in middle school. I got trained in uh, classical bass, percussion, saxophone, bassoon, trombone, and trumpet, all within 6th and 7th grade, oh. and kind of just was flushing out what I really wanted to do, and I ended up staying with concert bass for about another two years, fully classically trained, then I ended up uh, kind of just getting interested in guitar, and drifted over to that, and honestly, I think that's a big reason of why I write how I write, was because I anchor a lot more with bass than I do guitar, so a lot of my stuff is very rhythm focused. So that's where I ended up starting with all my music. Cool. Yep. Uh, my uncle uh, used to screw around in his like garage and stuff, and I loved playing drums. I did the school thing for a while. I did the dad career thing for a while, and now that I'm old, I'm young again. So about seven years ago, I decided I wanted to be in a band and get back out. All it all just fell together, man. Now I'm in five. So right on. I'm a third-generation drummer in my family. <laughs>